Hi, we're here at Paul Raymond's Summer Olympics 2012 with a couple of the crew members. Um, can you just start off by introducing yourself? Tell us a bit about what you do, who you are. I'm uh, Andrew Emery. I'm the editor of Club International, Men's World and Club DVD. Yes, so my name is Matt Berry. I did Mayfair and Men Only. What made you interested in getting in this kind of industry? Well, uh, I was a fan of the magazines when I was a teenager, uh, possibly underage. And uh, I actually had a couple of letters published in them when I was a, a student. So when I graduated, it seemed natural to apply here for a job. I'm not sure I could say I was a fan when I was a teenager, but uh, shortly thereafter, I got an interest in uh, naked ladies. Took it from there. <laughs> okay. Worked my way up. I think, it's, I think it's worth pointing out that when Matt was a teenager, he was kind of between the two great wars. So, uh, you know, they, they didn't have adult magazines then. They didn't even have probably print publication then, did they? <laughs> I saw some very naughty daguerreotypes uh, when I was... Uh... Um, I mean, this industry is kind of taboo in a lot of people's eyes. I, I, I mean, how do you find uh, the industry compared to the stereotypes that are, that are portrayed to people? Uh, very, very different. I mean, uh, you know, I, I have the, the pleasure and the privilege of working with a bunch of really intelligent, interesting people who aren't uh, kind of, you know, perverted or in any way scurrilous. You know, I have the best conversations about literature I can have anywhere with, with, with these guys at work. And, and also with ph photographers and models. It's actually a very professional industry and we make sure we treat everyone with, you know, the respect that we feel we deserve ourselves. Uh, um, well, I kind of agree with that, more or less. Um, Except to say that uh, I do have to work with some kind of pervert every now and again, <laughs> and it's him. What's your favourite part of working in this industry? Um, my colleagues. My, genuinely my colleagues. And also, uh, you know, just if, if I didn't have my colleagues and also some interaction with the readers, you know, we still get letters, some, some of them uh, really generous, some of them a bit crazy. Uh, just a sense you've got an audience out there who you're communicating with and they appreciate the different things you do every month. That makes it worthwhile. Matt, can you tell me a little bit uh, about some of the, the fan mail that you've received or something that's, I don't know, particularly interesting for you? <laughs> well, you know, as the editor of Mayfair, we have, a, we have a very kind of loyal readership who are very adamant that Mayfair is the best top shelf magazine. Uh, I have to say I agree with that. <laughs> People are writing in saying how amazing your latest issue is, and um, it's very, um, uh, it's great to get. These are all forgeries. Usually, my mum writes. It, <laughs> admittedly, uh, it's great to get that kind of feedback uh, from the readership. We used to get uh, a lot of um, letters and illustrations from Charles Bronson, who's uh, one of the most uh, infamous prisoners in the British prison system. Uh, he had a film made about him by Nicholas Vindin Refn. And uh, he, he used to send us uh, illustrations to Men Only, when I used to work on Men Only years ago, uh, letters. And we, kind of, we, we, you know, we knew who he was, but we threw them all in the bin, thinking, who cares? Uh, I mean, now his, his pictures written from inside prison and, and his drawings fetch 600 to 1,000 pounds at auction. And we threw Dozens in the bin. Um, how do you feel about that? <laughs> well, we'd all like to receive fan mail from Charles Bronson, uh, <laughs> the loopiest man in uh, Britain's penitentiary. Yeah, but uh, sadly, I can't. Uh, I can't. I can't equal that. Um, but um, just on just on a general level, uh, you know, th the fact that the readers um, kind of feel on on a on a level. The way they derive, the way they derive pleasure from the magazines, basically, I, I find, you know, I think it's great. I think it's great because we're not doing any harm to anybody, and a lot of people enjoy the magazines. And long may it continue. Long may it continue. Okay. Speaking of deriving pleasure, have you ever kind of, you know, stolen a few magazines from work and derived a little bit of pleasure yourself? Never. It's a busman's holiday to do that. Oh, he's a liar. Once, once, once you know who's put the magazine together, or you know, you no longer feel it sexy. Anybody watching this who reads the magazines and they, they see our two faces, that's going to put them right off their stroke. <laughs> what about you? No, no, it's it, it, it's practically impossible to get your rocks off to a magazine that you've edited yourself. Okay. In, uh, impossible, literally impossible. Although, although a few years ago we had a couple of freelance members of staff who were coming in the office to write 
and we and we found one of them in the toilet and he hadn't locked the door and we kind of went in to use the toilet and he was in there masturbating. You know who you are. <laughs> Do you ever find yourself kind of desensitized to women because of the material you're looking at all day long, vaginas, tits? Not, not at all, not at all. I think you can divorce yourself from what you're doing. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a happily married man. Matt's an unhappily married man. You know, we, we, know, the, we, know, the, we, we know the difference. Uh, and, you know, I think also you're, you're presenting women in a way for your audience. It's not how I would expect my woman to be in, in those circumstances, you know. There may be some men who maybe think that's what women are. We, d we don't, so we try our hardest to present women in every light possible. Looking at pictures of women does not desensitise you from how fantastic they are in the flesh. So uh, in no way does, um, does my job uh, kind of... Uh, detune me from the fact that women are fantastic and sexy creatures and uh, love, them. love them. Speaking of women, how do your partners feel about you working in an industry like this? Well, I'm quite lucky in that um, my, my uh, wife was in this industry. She was a glamour model and then she edited adult magazines as well. Um, so she feels fine, but equally she kind of knows what I see, so I can't really pretend. I can't come home and go, oh yeah, just another day at a photo shoot, you know, I didn't really see anything. She's like, I know what you've seen. But, but she understands that and she knows that I'm a, ultimately a professional person. So um, I have no problems with it at all. I think my wife would prefer that I was a merchant banker. <laughs> but uh, I am only in the rhyming slang sense of the word. So um, she's going to have to take what she's got, I'm afraid. And, uh, what can I say? How does somebody get into it? I think, I think you, ha you definitely have to be yourself. You can't try and come and pretend to be the sexiest person in the room and, and you know, and try and be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm really into it. It's like, at the end of the, end, end of the day, you've got to be professional. You know, if you're a model, you have to turn up on time and you have to have all your tests and you have to make sure that you get paid correctly by the photographer. If you're a photographer, you've got to deal correctly with the girls. Don't be rude, don't be disrespectful. Make sure you pay them. Uh, if you're an editor, you know, again, you know, we've got, huge workloads, uh, we've got a lot of pages to get out, and also you have to make sure the photographers and the models respect you. Uh, I, I think if you're good looking, that's a fairly good start. Um, thereafter, absolutely, it, it's, it's a job, treat it as a job, Do put in the hours, um, it's not a lifestyle choice, just you do your job, but you're a normal person as well, you know, so um, if you're happy to give it a try, give it a try because uh, there are plenty of people out there who'd like to um, have a look at the results. You're surrounded by beautiful people all day long. Have you ever thought about maybe taking it a step further and getting actually into the mix and maybe acting? They're making a film about our, our former boss, Paul Raymond, and um, Matt and I had the, the good fortune to, uh, uh, to improvise a scene with Steve Coogan and Chris Edison from the thick of it. And uh, we, had, we had a great day, didn't we? So hopefully, if they, don't, if they don't edit it out, we're going to be in a, in a, in a, in a cinema in a year soon. But they probably will edit it out. Is this hard work? <laughs> well, th right now, yes, I'd say this is hard work. <laughs> I'm really struggling here. It's a proper job, you know. Uh, we have to turn the magazines out every week or two, and um, there's no getting away from it. Um, it's, it's a, it's a full-on job, you know. It's a full-time job, and uh, we have to work at it. But... Um, it's an enjoyable, it's an enjoyable job because because of the crack in the office, uh, the the whole atmosphere, uh, and, and Andrew's right. You know, it's all about your colleagues, and I've n not yet really met a person in this industry that I didn't really feel happy working alongside. And uh, for me, that's fantastic. You don't get that in many other jobs. How long do you think you'll stay in this industry? Do you have any plans to move on or leave or continue with something else? Oh, well, you know, for the time being, I'm enjoying it. Uh, perhaps eventually a time will come where I feel like I'm not enjoying it anymore. But, um, you know, for now, I, I think it's a, it's a cracking job. And um, I, I really enjoy meeting new people and working with the crowd that I work with. And I can't see why I'd want to throw that away. Uh, when I got into it, I hoped I'd be in it for six to 12 months. I've now been in it 15 years, 
Uh, so I hope it lasts another 15 years. <laughs> That's what I said. Is there anything really outrageous that you've seen during the time that you've been with Paul Raymond? No comment. Come on, you've got something. I'm a married man, no comment. Oh, outrageous? No, I mean, I, you know, people having sex, but that's not, not especially outrageous, is it? So, um, no, um, I think um, for the most part, human beings have a fairly kind of standard range of interests. Sexual intercourse being fairly high amongst them, and I've experienced that, but um, no. We're, we're all just kind of humans muggling along and uh, I hope we can keep it up for as long as we can. I once attended a Bukaki in, in as an observer writing an article about it and it was about... Was observing by lying on the floor while... Uh... <laughs> and, and, and seeing one woman on her knees surrounded by ten men. Uh, and, but I wasn't the only observer there. There was like a married couple observing as well and they were there just to just to watch an experience, and I just found it a very strange experience that women would want to do that, and that people would, and also the males would want to participate in that. And I still, to this day, remember these 10 men masturbating, and the first one to ejaculate was a 75-year-old man. And as he ejaculated, he shouted, oh, jackpot. <laughs> you see, as you still get, as you get older, you still have it. Um, I guess, do you want to leave anybody with a kind of impression of what the industry is about or do you, want to, do you want to send a message to the viewers about what you think about the industry or what you want them to know? All I can say is uh, I really love it. I think it's, it's full of fantastic people who all know how to enjoy themselves, don't take themselves too seriously, which is very important as far as I'm concerned. And um, where's the home? You know, consenting adults doing what consenting adults do is fantastic. And uh, long may it last. Long may it last. Yeah, I echo that. I, I think it's a, it's a really good industry and it's full of very professional, interesting people. Uh, it's, got a, it's got a bad name, as many industries have, but once you get to know the people inside it, it's a, it's a truly interesting, fascinating industry. Well, thank you very much for your interview. This is Dana Feltner at Paul Raymond's. 2012 Summer Olympics. Thanks, guys.